Set up the instrument appropriately and adjust the probe delay on calibration block number 2 as usual. Optimize the reflection from the 25mm radius of calibration block number 2. Read and note the gain required to bring the signal to 80% screen height. In the next step, you must add the correction factor V for calibration block number 2 to the instrument gain to obtain the reference gain for the 25mm back wall. In this example, the reference gain is 27.2 dB. Now you can size a floor using the DGS method. First, find the floor, position the gate, optimize the signal, then bring it to 80% screen height with the gain control. You must read and note the gain and the position of the signal. 35.4 dB and 25 mm. To size the floor, you must first calculate the gain difference by subtracting the gain for the reference echo from the gain of the floor echo. Next, starting from your reference point for the back wall, you must go downward on the diagram by this gain difference. You may want to draw a horizontal line for a visual reference. In the next step, simply draw a vertical line from the position of the x-axis where you found the floor. The intersection of this line with the horizontal line defines the equivalent reflector size. For intersections which do not fall directly on a curve, the ERS can be estimated from the relative position to its neighboring ERS curves. In this example, an ERS size of 3.6 mm can be determined. Floor detectors from GE Sensing and Inspection Technologies can perform a DGS measurement much faster with the help of the optional DGS module. The setup of the instrument and the adjustment of the probe delay is performed as already described. To use the DGS module, you must optimize the signal from either an appropriately inclined back wall or from a back wall of calibration blocks number 1 or 2. If you use a calibration block, please make sure that you have the respective correction factor and that this correction factor is entered in the appropriate field in the DGS section. Also, make sure that the correct probe type is chosen and go to the Ref Echo menu item. Double check that your signal is optimized and that you have correctly positioned the gate over the signal. You may then record the reference echo. The only remaining actions are to choose the equivalent reflector size and to switch on the DGS mode. After a floor indication is found, the gate has to be positioned over this signal. The equivalent reflector size is then automatically evaluated and displayed by the instrument. We next want to explain an issue discovered in the legacy DGS probes and technique. If I measure the actual diameter of the reflector in this part, you will see that there is a deviation between the measured and the evaluated ERS diameter. This deviation, that is most prominent around the near field endpoint, comes from the fact that legacy angle beam probes normally have rectangular transducer elements that produce sound fields creating this error. Fortunately, tests have indicated that the error results in oversizing indications. For this reason, the results were conservative and didn't lead to any safety issues. Unfortunately, this oversizing also means that parts are necessarily reworked and scrapped. GE Inspection Technologies newly developed true DGS probes are able to overcome the oversizing issue with an innovative and revolutionary transducer design. The DGS probes can be used in the same way as MWB, SWB or WB angle beam probes. Set up the instrument as usual and choose the true DGS probe from the menu. Record the reference echo. Switch the DGS mode on. 
and find the floor and do the DGS sizing. When I compare the result that is displayed on the instrument with the diameter that is measured with a caliper, you can directly see that there is a very good correlation. The newly developed true DGS probes achieve a DGS sizing accuracy that is superior to those of current angle beam probes with rectangular elements, and which are comparable to those of straight beam probes having circular transducers. These accurate results are achievable even around the near field length of the probes. Engineers at GE Sensing and Inspection Technologies have been able to incorporate the true DGS methods and advantages into our line of phased array transducers and instruments. Furthermore, we were able to configure our true DGS phased array software following the familiar and proven techniques used in our conventional floor detectors. This familiar process will allow every conventional DGS operator to transition to the power of true DGS phased array inspection quickly and with minimal retraining. After you have loaded the instrument setup that is available within each true DGS phased array probe, you can set up the instrument the same way you would set up a conventional floor detector. The first step is to record the DGS reference echo. Please note that you can either record the echo on a back wall, a flat bottom hole, or on calibration block number one. All necessary correction factors come in the setup file supplied with the true DGS phased array and do not have to be entered manually. The next steps are similar to those on a conventional floor detector. Switch the DGS mode on and choose the desired DGS curve. The software was designed to combine the advantages of phased array with the advantages of the DGS method. Using a sectorial scan pattern, the phased array can test many angles virtually simultaneously and can still use the advantages of quick and accurate floor sizing without the use of extensive reference blocks. When using the sector scan image, the probability of detection of a floor is highly increased. After you've found an indication, optimize its signal and select the angle that gives the highest amplitude using the beam cursor. Please note that the DGS curve displayed on the A scan changes as the angle changes. When you've found the angle producing the highest amplitude, please ensure that the gate is over the floor signal. Once the gate is set correctly, the DGS measurement is performed in a manner nearly identical to conventional floor detectors. The end result is that the ERS is displayed on the phaser screen. It's possible to switch the phaser back to the A-scan screen that may enhance your ability to optimize the signals and further improve the DGS sizing accuracy. With the newly developed true DGS phased array probes and the phaser excess instrument, GE Sensing and Inspection Technologies was able to combine the pod advantages of multiple angle sectoral scanning versus the traditional 45, 60 and 70 degree scans with the speed and accuracy of true DGS floor sizing. We'll help you get it right.